Good morning. All right. So we are on section 2.3 of uh, the first investigation. I'm sorry, 1.3 of the investigation of looking for Pythagoras. So I'm going to do a couple of things with you guys today. First things first, we're going to look at looking at how to find the area of these irregular shapes uh, on this dot paper, which you'll see inside your book. This looks similar to, but I did different colors so we can just color coordinate them that way. So I would try my best to make sure you can read everything, but I'll do it all in black because I'm not sure how the glare looks on your end. So first things first, when you're doing this, do not write in my books, but visually, you're just cutting up all these shapes into squares or triangles. That's all you're doing. So I got every square counts as one square unit. Every triangle counts as one half, not one and a half, but one half square unit. So if I'm looking at that first shape, so I have all my, and some of this stuff, guys, is as simple as this. So I would just do, sorry, this shape right here to the side. So we know when you add up the area, this is basic mental math, guys. It's one plus one plus half. Now you know why there's always a half in the formula for the area of a triangle. But the area equals uh, 2.5 units squared. Yes, I use a decimal. I use the D word, not the F word. But that's how we're doing it today, y'all. We're doing Ds. Sometimes it's okay to do Ds when... It makes sense. All right, next thing. And those parents who heard me say that I was referring to the F, F word is our fraction word because our kids hate fractions so much. Um, now, uh, going out, we're gonna do the triangle. All right, I'll just send the triangle up right here. And uh, always look at it and try to make this as easy as possible so that you guys can you know, readily figure this out. And I got my, now you gotta remember the the base and height is always met of every single polygon where there's a perpendicular intersection. So I'm going to have to use this right here as the height of my triangle. Okay. Now my base is here. My height is here because the height and base of every single polygon is always going to be where there's a 90 degree angle. Okay. So the area of the triangle is going to be, now let's just do the Simple math, and we know it's one half times the base length is that's a segment of one, two, three, four. Guys, listen, every year I've been teaching this because we make the same mistakes. Please don't make the same mistake. Don't start here and say one, two, three, four, five. Each line segment counts as one line segment. So that's one segment, two segment, three segment, four segment. And our height is exactly one, two, three. So Half times four is two, two times three is six. So our triangle is exactly six units squared in uh, area. Now this one's a little funky. We gotta look at it, take your time, look at it, visualize what you wanna do to organize your thinking. But I can see, I can visualize a triangle here, a rectangle here, and then another triangle. And that looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna just cut it up visually. Do not write in my books. Please don't write in my books. And I got my base and my height of this triangle, just like I have my base and my height of this rectangle, because again, the 90 degree angle, but I don't have a height of my triangle. So I'm gonna recognize the height of my triangle is right there, okay? Now, let's go ahead and figure out what this is. So I got my, where's my blue or my purple? What is this? Purple. Um, let's just call this like, like this. Done. It's good enough. Okay. So you have an organizational cheat sheet for yourself, if you will. So our area is going to be, well, this right here. So this is going to be, I'm going to put in this parentheses because I'm going to add up all these areas together because I got different shapes now. And this is what you should do is always organize yourself when doing this stuff. So I got my area of this triangle right here, which is the base is one segment length times one times the height, which is one, two, okay? Plus the area of this rectangle, and I know this is mental math for you, but I'm just spelling it out for you. Um, we got bases two, height is, I'm sorry, bases one, height is two. So the area of formula of the rectangle is uh, uh, base times height, so one times two. Sorry, I'm running on E this morning, or this, e this evening. Uh, and the last thing is this triangle right here, the one on its side, and that's gonna be one half times the base is one, two, three times one, okay? 
So my area is one half times one plus times two, which is going to be one. Uh, so I got one plus one times two, which is two plus half times three times one is one point five. So your area of this shape is just add them all up, show all your work. Three plus one point five, so this is four point five units squared. That is as easy as it gets. Okay, take your time. I'm not going to bother pretending like I know how to draw this shape, so I'll just do a quick little... Okay, that's good enough. So, my area. Now, you don't have to do this when you're doing your work or re redrawing the shapes. Just identify them as the shapes that they're identified inside the uh, given uh, dot paper. Now, here's how we got to do it. Take your time with this, because now it gets a little more tricky. Okay? So... I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I want to try to make this as easy as possible. Now, if I'm going to do this like this right here, I can do a triangle there as well. I got a base and I got a height. I got a base and I got a height right there. I'm just planning this out before I do it. If I draw this across here, I got my triangle down here. I draw this here. I'm going to be left with a rectangle in the middle and a triangle here. This is perfect. All right. So always plan yourself out a little bit. So there's that triangle. There's that triangle right here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go like here. And that gets this triangle right here. And I'm going to go right here like this. So now i got this all sectioned off. And this is all you got to do to figure out these areas, these regular shapes, is just cut them up into shapes you're familiar with. So let's start over here on this one. So I'm going to do one half times my base is right here one, and my height is one two. Plus, let's do this other triangle. Base is one. So here's my 90 degree angle. Remember, 90 degree angle is your base and height. One half times your base is one, and your height is two again, which is nice. Let's do this other rectangle down here. This is your height right here. Remember, because there's your 90 degree angle. I got my. I'm adding this still to one half times my base is now two, my height is one, okay? And my, let's do all triangles at once, get them done with, stay organized. Uh, I gotta find my height. This is your height right here, because this is the very top of your stuff and the very bottom. There's your 90 degree angle. This was nice. So you got a one half times your base is one, two, three times one is the height. Last but not least, let's do that rectangle. Stay organized. I got my base of two, my height of one, plus two times one. So now let's do it from right here from the very top. One half times one is one half times two is one. So I'm going to do one plus another one plus another right here. This answer is also going to be one plus this answer here, which is one half times this. This is going to be plus 1.5 plus 2, okay? Last but not least, add them all up. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, plus 4.5 plus 2, which is your area is 6.5 units squared. Well, well, well. So there you have it. That's how you do these types of things. And I cannot stress to you enough the importance of of writing out the formulas every single time because the amount of kids that constantly throughout my entire career forget to do the one half times base time height for triangles make the most common mistakes. Back in a short minute with some more examples. All right, so my next last two examples are these two shapes, which you'll see in some version of tomorrow. I'm leaving this up so we can talk about it tomorrow in class if we have any questions. Uh, right here, I'm going to do one at a time. So the first thing's first. Uh, oh, I forgot to put dimensions. Uh, let's call this, uh, let's call this uh, 16 inches, okay? This is square, so this is also 16 inches. So how do I go about solving this? Well, in order to do this, I need to know my formulas, and I need to use both. So I have a square, and I got a circle. So I know I'm going to be using length times width, and I also know I'm going to be using the area formula for a circle, which is pi times uh, radius squared. Okay, so it's really important we know all these different dimensions and what these formulas are. Now, I'll never expect to memorize these formulas, but I will expect you to know how to use them. So 
I got to find the area of the circle, and I'm going to have to take this area of the circle away from the area of the square to find my leftover area, which is the shaded region. Okay. So now that I have a game plan in mind, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So uh, I can solve for the area of the square first or the area of the circle. I'm going to do the harder one first. We're going out of the way. Well, the radius is half the diameter. All right. That's a fact always. So I'm looking for this radius right here. So if this whole thing is 16 across, this has to be 8. Okay. So for the sake of argument, we can use 3.14 uh, in place of pi and multiply that by 8 squared. So this is going to be A equals 3.14 times 64. And uh, let's see what that is. So 3.14 times 64 is the area of that circle is 200.96. Now, rule of thumbs, if you get an answer for the outside shape, that is smaller than this, then that means you did something wrong. So always double check, making sure you understand, does the answer I give make sense? Well, it will make sense about in a minute. The area for the square is going to be 16 times 16. So the area is 256. So our shape on the outside is larger than the area on the inside. That's perfect. Now the last thing you do here is just take the area of the square minus the area of the circle. So 256 minus... 200.96 is 255.04. Uh, I'm slow today because I'm on E. I think I'm right. 200.96. Yeah. Sorry. 55. Sorry. 55.04. My apologies. There you go. That is the area of the shaded region for a question like that. I generally see questions like this on a lot of my quizzes and tests. I generally see these questions on standardized tests. I generally see these questions throughout the book. I generally see these types of questions on everything we do in Algebra 1. This is a combination of a lot of skills. Uh, hopefully this tutorial makes sense. I'm going to try to fit in right here underneath it, the number, the net one right, right here. This one now requires you to use the Pythagorean theorem because I want to find the area of this shaded region also. So now I know that I'm going to need organizer thinking. I need the area of a triangle times base times height. I'm going to need the area of a circle, but I'm going to manipulate. Uh, I'm going to manipulate this area of a circle because it's not a full size circle. It is the half size of a circle. So make sure you manipulate the formula because you're allowed to do that because this is only the half size circle. And the next thing I'm going to need is, I'm going to need to know what this length is, so I need to know my Pythagorean theorem. Okay, always organize your thinking. Now i got all my tools, now I'll start using them. i got to use this first to figure out, do I need my area of my circle, my triangle? Maybe I don't, because all I care about is the area of this. So I guess I don't need this, all I need is these two right now. Okay, always think, always think. So... Uh, we don't know our a, so this is a squared plus 24 squared equals 30 squared. Let's see what this math comes out to be. So I got 24 squared is 576 plus 576 equals 900. Minus 576 from both sides. The area squared equals 300. 24. Uh, now I take the square root of both sides to find this. So I take 324 square root of, that's beautiful, beautiful. That's 18. I like those clean numbers. That always makes our life a lot easier. All right. So if this A is 18, we now know the diameter of our circle, which means we know the radius, which is half of that. So the radius is uh, 9. Okay, that's crucial. Now we're going to use this formula right here and do it. So A equals, again, 3.14 times 9 squared all divided by 2. And for the sake of space, I'm expecting you guys to know what 9 squared is, and that is 81. So let's do this. So 
uh, 3.14 times 81 equals 3, I'm sorry, 254.34 divided by 2. And that area is 127.2 because more often than not, we're going to round to the nearest tenths. That is how you do that. Pause, ask questions tomorrow. We'll be going through this again. By tomorrow, I mean today if you're watching it on the 15th. Nonetheless, I will see you guys all in class.